Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to be doing the Sane Smart Genmitsu 4040 Pro Max install. Uh, we're going to unbox this thing, check it out, see what comes on the inside, put it all together, and then do a first run right here on this channel right now. Here we go, the 4040 Pro Max. It's an upgraded version to their 4040 Pro. Same size working area, 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters, but they upgraded some of the features on this one, which is better than the uh, 4040 Pro. For instance, this now comes with a 710 watt a router basically it, it, it's basically a router but they're calling it a spindle so that you can go ahead and just have a really awesome powerful router right off the bat opposed to having one of those little tiny 65 hold on i might have one right here something like this this is just a little uh, 75 watt motor they're very ineffective and they're only good for like super super small projects but now with the upgraded spindle uh, it's basically like having a router. It goes up to 30,000 RPMs. It's, it's way, way better. Another upgrade that they have on this is the Z axis is definitely upgraded. It's a lot more rigid than the last machine. It's not going to flex on you or anything like that like the other machine would because it was a lot smaller and a lot, uh, lot flimsier, I guess. It has linear rails now, so that's really awesome. Another thing that they upgraded is the amount of height in said Z axis. Uh, it's now 100 millimeters opposed to 65 millimeters that the last machine was. Now you can fit about something that's almost four inches. It's like 3.9 inches where the last one was about 2.6 inches, something like that. Not much more to talk about it. Let's just go ahead and get right into the unboxing. We'll get all these parts laid out and then we'll go ahead and get it built and put together. Let's do it. So I went ahead and I got all my parts laid out. And honestly, uh, this thing is gonna be really, really easy to put together. So you have your uh, Y1 and your Y2 rails right here. This is the base bars. These are the support bars that go across this direction. This one, I believe, because it has the wire connections, is going to be the backside, which this will then plug into this motor. This one will plug into that motor over here. Then we have our spoil board, which will go on top. Over here, we have all of our bits and nuts and bolts and everything. We got our instructions. We have our spindle mount right here, and it actually comes with a sleeve. So if you wanted to install a different motor, you could, but we're gonna go ahead and obviously use the 710 kilowatt motor that it comes with. You have your control box, which is mounted to the side. And then this little bracket here. Let's go over here. We have our power supplies. Looks like we have some two little mounting brackets. So we'll probably need those to go over here. Got our computer cable. You would probably have to get an offline controller if you wanted to not use a computer with this, uh, but this does not come with an offline controller. Coming back over here, we have our 710 watt motor and you could see the motor is basically controllable by this right here. You can speed it up manually uh, just by spinning that little wheel right there. This is the x-axis and z-axis. You can see the linear rails and then they have the little NEMA 17s. This isn't a very powerful high torque motor right here, these little NEMA 17s, but you know they'll do the job and it does look like it's a nice rigid z-axis with those linear rails and then the round tubular rails. Um, and you could see down in here, you could see the ball screw driven and as I turn this it's going to turn this. So no belts on this machine whatsoever. Pretty solid, sturdy machine, nice heavy gauge aluminum. So I think we're ready to go ahead and get this thing installed, get it put together and then do a test cut. So let's go ahead and build this thing. Shouldn't be too hard. Probably take me about 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get this thing whole built together. Uh, should be pretty easy. Thank you. 
Alright guys, what is going on? So it is the next day and I finally got everything squared away with the Jinmitsu 4040 Pro Max. I got it hooked up to the computer. Easel recognized it right away. There was no installing. I did add another machine because I have multiple machines on Easel. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a test cut right now. You can see right here, I got everything nice and strapped down. Everything is hooked up. The spindle works. Let me go ahead and turn this on and I'll show you because it is a manual spindle. It doesn't turn on with your cutting. So you have to manually flip it on yourself. So there it is right there. And you can see this little knob right here. This selects your speed. All right, so we went ahead and got that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do this uh, Deadpool little sign right here. Just a little engraving. There it is right there. This is just a piece of MDF. It's a little quarter inch piece of MDF. We're only gonna go one millimeter deep. We're not gonna go too crazy deep. We are using the 30 degree end mill. This is a V-bit uh, cut. It's a flat bit. So when you look at it at that direction, it looks like a normal bit. But when you turn it sideways, it's flat. So, and this is a 30 degree cut. All right, so let's go ahead and do this test cut real quick and see how it does. Let's go ahead and home the machine. All right, so we are now in the home position. Let's go over here and get the Z-Probe. The Z-Probe wasn't set already. It, I needed to adjust it. It is 12.15 millimeters. Again, it wasn't the exact thickness that I thought it was going to be. Uh, the top part over here is a little bit thinner than it is back here. It has a slight angle. So I kind of cut the... Um, Z probe depth in half and I figured that like this was 12 point something 12.0 this was 12.2 so I just cut cut it down the middle and did 12.15 all you got to do is connect it here and what that will do will give it a you could see the red light when you're probing it just makes that connection all right so let's go ahead come over here and let's go ahead and carve this project. What I did was I did the blue tape method. Um, I went ahead and I'm not using the clamps. And when we're done with this, I'm gonna show you something as well on the bottom of this wasteboard. 
uh, that is a little bit, I'll show you a couple things that I'm not too fond of. All right, let's carve it. Let's go ahead and start probing. Let's put that away. The Z probe is away. I'm gonna turn the spindle on because you gotta do it manually. All right guys, that is it. This is the Jinmitsu 4040 Pro Max by Sane Smart. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you my pros and cons about this machine right now. Let me give you with the pros first. The pros are this thing is absolutely ridiculously easy to put together. If you're just kind of getting into the hobby of this, probably takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes max to put together. Another thing that I like about this is there's no belts whatsoever. It's completely ball screw and tube rail driven. There's no drag chain or anything like that to get in the way. Your footprint on this is extremely small. Let me get a tape measure and I'm gonna show you how wide of a footprint from front to back that you need if you're planning on building a bench. You're looking at a total of 27 inches from the base of this to your control box right here. Front to back, including the motors, you're looking at again about 27 inches. So you can have a bench, you can make something about 27 inches by 27 inches, you're gonna be totally fine. Now you, again, you might need something to put your computer on or something along that lines. So I would recommend that you have a bench about 48 inches by 27 by four foot. If you have a little table or a bench that you make for this, it should be perfect. Another thing that I like about this is it does come with this heavy duty spindle, but that spindle is awesome because you're getting basically a trim router where you don't need to spend more money to get a bigger spindle. One of the things that I'm not too fond about this machine is a very petty little thing that I really don't like is the Z probe. I really do like to use the Z probe. Some people use the paper method, but I'm a really big fan of using a Z probe. And I do not like these little plastic Z probes. They're never the same thickness from the front to the back. They're always a different weird thickness because they're basically putting together on plastic. I like the solid block aluminums. They're pretty much milled perfectly and they're just a lot better. The other thing that I don't like that I think the Reno did this too, is they mount the Z probe on the back of the Z axis or that little box that's on the back of the Z probe that is permanently fixed to this, the Z probe is in there. So this goes back and forth with this. And I don't like that. I don't know why they just don't put this and connect it directly into the control box. That way you can do your Z probe right here in the front corner or wherever you're at, put it off to the side and it won't hinder any of your cuts. You could hypothetically, I'm assuming, unplug it when you're done with it so it doesn't get in the way or get damaged or get caught up into this. I just don't know why they just don't put that plug here instead of back here. Don't like it. I don't know why they do that. Another thing that I'm not too fond of is this type of spoil board. It's a two-piece spoil board. I kind of wish that with these 4040s that they would put it in a little bit bigger box or make the box a little bit a different shape and make these spoil boards just one solid board. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So when you get these spoil boards, it's actually two boards right here put together. And on this particular board, that's, it's not level. You could see right here, it's a little bit bowed and you can hear it right here. Let me get something and I'm gonna show you. 
we'll just use this right here. If I run this across the top, it has like a drop. But if I try to go the other way, it won't allow me to go across because there's a lip right here that you have to plane down flat. So you can level this out by using your router and going back and forth and planing it down flat. Or what I highly recommend you do is you put an additional piece of MDF like this and permanently affix it to this one solid piece. And that'll give you a much flatter uh, work surface and then you can actually plane this one down if you wanted to uh, to level it out. I'm not a big fan of these type of spoil boards. I like the T-Tracks uh, but I definitely like adding another piece of MDF. That way it protects this one in the long term. What you can also do is you can actually just get rid of this altogether and just make your own spoil board. These are pretty easy to replace. I never really use those T-clamps or anything like that. I always use the blue tape method with blue tape. This is accelerator and this is the adhesive. You basically put it on the front and back of the tape and then you hold down your piece. To me, it's a little bit more money because you're buying some of these extra stuff, but it's just the best way of doing it. You're not gonna get in the way of hitting a T-clamp or any kind of clamp with your bit and then for, you know break it or anything like that. The blue tape method is the way to go. For the price, 900 bucks, it's a really good deal. If you're just getting into CNC, $900 is a great entry level price. All right guys, I hope this video helped you out some if you're in the decision making of which CNC machine to get. I do have a lot of other videos coming up and as a matter of fact, we have another machine that we're gonna be reviewing, I think in the next two to three weeks. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, go down below, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that bell button. That way you get notified of all of my newest videos. But until that next video, make sure y'all do one thing, stay awesome. We'll see you on the next one, bye.